In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a vignette effect in Blender's Compositor. So here I am in Blender's Compositor. You can see here is this kitchen scene that I made a little while ago, and I just added this in as an image. But this will also work for the render layers because you can see that I just rendered this out. Uh, this is my pumpkin tutorial. So whether you're adding in an image or using the render layers, this will work for both of them. So what I'm going to do is press Shift A and I'm going to search for a box mask. Now you could also use an ellipse mask. So if I press Shift A, start typing E L, you'll see there's this ellipse mask. Add this in. You could use either one of these, but I like using a box mask better. Now I also have the node wrangler add-on turned on. So if I hold down control and shift and click on the nodes, I can preview what they look like. So you can see that this box mask is just making a little white box in the center of the scene. What you can do if I just make this a little bit bigger, you can see if I just change the width and height, it's gonna change the size of the box. I can also hold down shift while I'm uh, moving these and that way the movements are gonna be more sensitive. And I'm just going to make a box pretty big. I'm just going to leave a little black border around the edges, but most of it is gonna be white. Now this doesn't really look like a vignette right now, but what we're gonna do is blur it so that it's a little bit dark on the edges and then it kind of blurs out to white. So I'll press Shift A here. I'm gonna search for a blur node. I'm just gonna drop the blur node right in here. And then if I click and then drag down and then move this value, I can change the blur. You can also click, drag down and let go and then just type in like 300 or something. That's a little bit too big. I'm gonna type in maybe 200. So how we add this into our image now is I'm gonna press Shift A and search for an alpha over node. Just gonna drop the alpha over node right in here. So what I wanna do is I wanna have this image of the kitchen render and I wanna mix that with the vignette effect. But where the white is, I want it to be the kitchen and then where the black is, I want it to get black. So how I'm gonna do this is this image here, I'm gonna plug this into the bottom one and then this top one here, I'm gonna make it black and then to tell it where it's gonna be the image and where it's gonna be black, I'm going to use the box mask. So the blur right here, just plug it into the top one. Now if I control shift and click on this, you can see what it's doing. So it's a little bit dark out here and then it's just the image in the center. Now if this is the opposite for you, if it's dark in the middle and then you can see the images on the outer side, uh, it's really easy to fix this. You just press shift A, search for an invert node and drop that in between the blur and the alpha over, you can see I don't want that because it worked fine for me, so I'll just delete that. And then if for some reason you didn't wanna have it black, you could also just change this top image color right up here and make it a different color. I don't really know why you'd want that, but sometimes it may be useful. I usually just use black though. And this works for the render layers too, so if you just rendered out your image, you can just unplug this and then plug the image of the render layers up to the bottom one. Now let's say you want to edit this because maybe you want it to be less of a vignette or more of a vignette. What you can do is you can change the width and height here. I'm just going to control shift and click on this. If you want to add more of a vignette, you're going to need to make these smaller so there's more black. And then if I click on this, you can see that it's a lot darker. You can also play around with the blur. So if I just make this bigger, you can see it's going to be a lot more faded. Or if I make it really small and not very blurred, it's going to be really sharp. So you can just change it to your liking. And then I'm also gonna show you what the ellipse mask looks like. If I just plug this mask here up to the image, if I control shift and click on it, it's just a kind of a circle oval. So I can do the same thing, just drag this out. It's pretty much the same exact workflow. Now you can see it's blurring it. And if I click back on this, this is what it's doing. Now, most of the time, I don't really care to use the ellipse mask because you can see it, it's really black right here and then it's just white here. So I like to use the box mask instead, but there may be cases where you wanna use the ellipse mask. And then to save your image, what you can do is go to the rendering tab. And then right here, this is the render result. We wanna see the viewer node. So just click on this, click on a viewer node, and then you would just go image and save as, and just save that like a regular image. Thank you for watching. I hope this video was helpful and I'll see you in a future video.